welcome to Science Hit, where you can get your weekly hit of science. Today we're going to explain to you the processes of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs in autotrophs, plants. Autotrophs manufacture organic materials from the inorganic materials around them. They get their energy from the sun and nutrients from the soil. Plants capture sun energy and convert water and carbon dioxide into oxygen, sugar and water. This process can be summarised by this equation. This may seem complicated, but if you look closely, you can see it's just water and carbon dioxide being converted into oxygen, sugar and water. This water is used by plants, as is the sugars, and the oxygen is released. This fantastic process, which enables human life on Earth, is only made possible thanks to chloroplasts. Chloroplasts, like mitochondria, were once single-celled organisms that are now incorporated within a multicellular organism. Let's take a look at the structure of chloroplasts. There are six main components. The stomata, it's a gel-like matrix rich in enzymes. Two outer membranes, the thyroid membrane, which is enclosed within the granatum. The granatum stacks individual grana, and the granana, where photosynthesis occurs. This brings us to the process of photosynthesis, which can be split into two main stages the light dependent and the independent. Light independent stage. This is where the light energy is absorbed by the pigment chlorophyll in the thylakoid membrane. This energy then splits water molecules, which releases oxygen and an electron. This electron is passed along a chain of molecules in the electron transport system, giving off energy at each step. This energy is used to create ATP that is used to make sugar molecules, and a byproduct of this process is NADP. The light independent stage takes place in the stroma. This is the part of the process that requires no light. Carbon dioxide, the hydrogen from the water, and the ATP are all needed for this process to occur. NADP binds with the hydrogen atom and transports it to the stroma. This allows for the Calvin-Benson cycle to occur. The Calvin-Benson cycle uses a 5-carbon sugar molecule called ribulose bisphosphate, which binds to carbon dioxide and dissolves in the stroma. This process is called carbon fixation. This creates a 6-carbon molecule that gets broken down to a 3-carbon sugar. It takes 3 molecules of CO2 to produce 6 molecules of the 3-carbon sugars. Only one of the sugars leaves the cell and gets used in the creation of the 2 glucose molecules. The rest of them get used to create the 5-carbon molecule used at the start of the process. Thank you for watching, remember to subscribe and tune in next time for your next hit of science.